Hi everyone. I've got a 30-minute uh, game on the board against the uh, player rate rated 368. And I've tried the unusual Nimzovich defense. So against e4, I simply bring out my knight to c6. Now this is a very unusual kind of opening and I'm not sure it's necessarily recommended for beginners and the, one of the reasons is because it can transpose into all kinds of other things. Um, so I don't know any of the theory on it re uh, really. So um, I think I'm going to go ahead and play e5. We'll go for a kind of symmetrical um, approach. So this is like the Vienna game really now. So we've got e4 and then the knights come out. Okay, so we've got two knights. So we're just going to go with principal play, right? So knight is attacking pawn, knight is defending, so that's okay. That knight's defending that pawn, and that's okay. Um, we could go for four knights. I could bring out my bishop. The bishop to here could be a possibility, kind of means the knight would be pinned if the d-pawn moves, which means that that could then be undefended. That's a possibility. So you can see now that the uh, the Nimzovich defence transposed into the Vienna game and then now also into the three knights. Okay, so we've got a pawn kick. This is very, very common, very typical. I've got a couple of options. I can drop my bishop back if he wants to kick again. I can come to here, then lined up with that place where the king is likely to go. So let's try that one. It's been a very bad chess day today. I'm zero from four today. And uh, we'll see what we've got. Okay, so he's kicked again. So I'm simply gonna drop straight back down to b6. There's no other move. But now I am looking at the F f2 square with ideas of maybe the queen could come out here looking at that square. Also, your knight is only two jumps away from that square as well. So right now we've got two pieces out for white, two pieces out for black. Black uh, White has pushed a few pawns. Um, we're both a couple of moves away from castling. Yeah, very bad chess day today. And yet I played four games. I should have played one, and if I lose that game, stop playing. That's one way to guard your ratings. Okay, so he's, he's going for a bishop trap here, so I just push a6 to give my bishop an escape square on a7. Too many unnecessary pawn moves in the opening is uh, typical of beginner play. Okay, so he's really committed his pawns now on this side of the board. Um, what it means is that there's no way he's going to be castling queenside. So with these pawn moves, he's already kind of showed his hand. This pawn's also undefended, we have to notice. It's not easy to defend. All right. So he's got two attackers on this pawn now. Only one defender. If I take, he has to take back with a knight, and then I get this pawn. I think that looks reasonable. He's got to capture the knight, can't capture the queen, because knight takes queen. Right, he's decided not to recapture at all, he's decided to attack my queen instead. That's interesting. I've got knight e7, seems to be one good way to block that. I don't have any checks. I'd like to capture this knight, but then also simply f6. See, if I push my pawn to f6, I'm now attacking two pieces, aren't I? So I think in this instance, it's worth moving the f-pawn. He can't save both. How can he save both pieces? Pawn's attacking that, pawn's attacking that. So this is an example of a, a, a miscalculated counter-attack. So he says, yes, I see that my knight is under attack. Okay. And, but I'm going to attack now a more valuable piece instead of retreating my, uh, my knight or simply capturing the attacker, which is the obvious move. 
but he's put his attacker on a square where it in turn can be counter-attacked. So now white has a problem. Two pieces under attack and no way to save both of them. So we just grab the knight and now we're a piece up. Notice this pawn is undefended. This pawn's actually not even attacked right now. So a simple idea is queen e7 and threaten to capture on e4 with check. It would have to be blocked by queen or bishop there. Note this is not a move because knight can capture because it's the only defender of that square is actually pinned against my queen. This pawn is undefended. Alright, so he's coming after the pawn, finally. I'm going to play this move anyway, because I have a choice of two pawns that my queen can, can take. So if he captures this one, then I can capture on b4, pinning the rook, and maybe also winning this. Now, knight to e5 is actually playable. Now, one thing I do need to be careful about, if rook takes here, I cannot capture on here with my queen, because white then has rook e3, skewering the queen. And we do not want that. So if rook takes, I think queen takes b4 is the way to go. He hasn't even taken. Huh. So should I take this pawn anyway? It attacks the rook, and the rook now can't take there. So the rook will have to... Rook could go here, in which case I can grab this pawn. Let's do that. It gets my queen and my king off the same file anyway, which is no bad thing. So the rook's now under attack. Can't capture there. Can't go here. Can't stay where it is. So we can either go back there or there, or to here with a counter-attack on the queen, in which case I simply drop back and grab the pawn and still he can't capture this pawn. So I think natural looking moves now would be knight g to e7, preparing to castle. I'd like to get my pawn up to release this bishop. This bishop's in actually quite a good place, my dark square bishop, quite like that. So even, for example, queen here, if white doesn't castle, could be quite threatening. In fact, though, the bishop's defending that square. So I've lost no material yet. I'm going to play my knight out to there. I think everything's pretty much covered. That pawn's defended by the bishop. I'd just like to get my kings to safety, really. Then try and press home my material advantage. Still, the rook can't capture that pawn. Okay, I have now... Knight e5 hits the knight and the queen. If the queen takes the pawn, I might simply trade queens. I'm up in material now. If knight takes knight, queen takes, and similar story. So let's go ahead and do that. It kind of improves the knight anyway. I think we're okay. It's all just tactics. Everything's tactics. I'm a knight and three pawns up. So far I haven't lost any material at all. So trading queens now, any trades will be good for me. It'll leave me with more options, more material later on in the game. Still want to push this. It's just goldfish. And that. So this pawn's actually undefended on g7, but it'll be okay once I castle.
it's nice to see people rated between three and 400 playing 30 minute games. This is exactly what you should do. Okay, so the immediate threat is his queen's under attack. So he has to do something about that. He's got two options, move the queen or capture the attacker. So he's captured the attacker. I'm gonna recapture with my queen. Let's just double check. Now he does have rook takes here. Queen is still defending that pawn. If queen takes, I will trade queens. No question. Also got knight to here. For some reason, he's got a real problem with um, capturing that pawn. Okay, but this actually creates a problem because now g5 traps his dark squared bishop. It does, however, mess up my uh, king side a little bit, but material is material. Also, bishop to here, so second defender on the pawn is, not, is a move. Um, I think this is too, too tempting not to capitalize on. Got to be careful with bishops, because they're limited only to one color of square. You start blocking off the retreat squares for a bishop, you've got to be absolutely sure that it can't be captured. Okay, here's a nice little check. I can block it with my knight. That looks okay. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Then we've got maybe rook and queen looking down towards h2. This pawn is actually pinned, so it cannot move. So I don't think he has any, any other good checks. He's got queen takes d7 or bishop takes there. Either way, I can capture. But he'd be a fool to swap off his other bishop when the other bishop is still trapped and he's way down in material. Still got options actually of castling queen side. That might be a, a good idea. Okay, rook to there. Mm hmm. Well, let's grab the bishop anyway. If pawn takes here. I've actually got queen takes. Bishop there as well. So what you should do is actually capture the knight first or retreat the bishop. But either way, he's going to find himself in a lot of trouble very quickly. Remember, this pawn's still pinned. So if I can capture that pawn with my queen, that could be very good. The rook is undefended. So I'm get my queen there. The king has to move into the corner, capture the rook. And it's all going to be over very soon. I don't know why he's hesitated so long to capture that spare pawn. I don't think it's made a huge material difference to the game. So you've got two options. Either capture the knight with check, force me to recapture, or retreat the bishop. He's got to spot that the bishop is attacked and undefended. Things like rook here is no, no issue. You can still push the pawn anyway. So now nine materials in front. A good game to analyze afterwards. I think I'll be tempted to drop the bishop back to e2. Maybe pair it up, or even ideas of this. It's taken a while over this move, isn't it? Should have taken a bit longer over some of his others, though. We're now deep into the middle game, at least for white. He completed development a long time ago. I still haven't castled my king, because there were too many tactical opportunities going.
be my first win of the day if I win this game. I think. And capturing there is good. He's got to recapture with the H pawn. That's an odd move. Surely it just drops the bishop, but I've even got bishop takes rook. I'm going to play that first. Bishop takes rook. Two and a half minutes and he blunders his rook. You've got to do the sanity check. This is what I haven't been doing today. Okay, pawn takes or queen takes. Still got queen takes bishop there. I have to have a huge material advantage, which is great as long as you don't get checkmated. Okay, now, do we just grab the bishop? You see, from here, I can then play queen to here with check. So I don't see... I don't think white has any checks from this position, so let's go ahead and play that. Got ideas of this. Could win this pawn. Um, I'd still like to... If pawn advances, I can capture with queen or with knight or with pawn. So I'm okay with that. Can't take there because bishop takes. Knight here is also a decent move because it's a, it's got a check move. Okay. So if I play queen in here, he can either block with his queen, but that loses the queen, or he plays king to here, and then I've got a check. That could be good. It's potentially even checkmate, I think, in, in two. Is that four? Oh no, rook's not defending the... Huh. So now I'm going to push this, which does drop this pawn, but then that, I think, would be checkmate. To see if he gets greedy and grabs the pawn. Doesn't seem to be the greediest player. Still, again, checking for checks. Always got to watch your back. Where I've been playing today. Okay, is that mate? It certainly is. There you go. Nice little checkmate there. Right, let's have a review. So, if you're in maybe the sub 500, unusual opening. And he's played a reasonable response. You know, sometimes just mirroring what your opponent does is reasonable. But, you know, he's developed a knight. And he's defending his pawn. We have a mirror image. Uh, I bring my bishop out. Now, this is not an immediate major threat, right? If bishop takes the knight, you can probably just recapture. Maybe with either pawn. Um, in fact, capturing with a b-pawn in the Vienna is... Uh, pretty typical. So this I think was unnecessary. Bishop retreats, double kick, again and now another push but my bishop always had this hidey hole to escape to and these pawns are not strong pawns, right? They're out there as a two. It's a difficult and, and yet he proceeds with another pawn move and the bishop just drop, drops back and this bishop is now in a sniper's nest and remains there for much of the game. In fact, picks up a loose rook later on, right? Now we have d4, which is reasonable. We have a... Uh, so I capture the pawn here, but this was a mistake, right? As, as we explained in the game live, he's got a piece under attack, but now he has two pieces under attack because I can break the attack on the queen with a counterattack of my own. Now he's in a double attack. Not great, and the knight falls. Uh, so here, I had the option of uh, capturing this pawn, but I decided to go straight for the direct full frontal approach. Attack the pawn, he breaks, and I have a choice of pawns here, but I've got to be very careful about rook here, if my queen is here, and my king there. So here I grab that pawn, rook attacks, grab another pawn, castles now. He can't grab the pawn, okay? Getting ready to castle myself. Queen up, knight attacks queen, and we have a trade of knights. Now pawn pushes, and again, another blunder, because he's trapped his own piece. Check, which is a, a decent response, but easy to block. 
and now the bishop falls and now after like we said two and two and a half minutes he blunders his rook just not paying attention to the sniper bishop hiding away there in the corner he should know that bishop's there because he put it there okay so now we're up 11 materials now we're up 14 materials now check and I thought that I had this, but I forgot that there's another H-pawn there blocking the defense. So push that. Um, and pretty much anything my opponent does now. I mean, the, the king actually has no squares to move to. So how does uh, white stop this move? I think maybe H3 might have worked there. But anything else, and pawn to H3, the lovely checkmate. Queen's guarding the back rank. Queen's guarding that diagonal, the king is in check, and it's all over pretty quickly, but definitely an enjoyable game. Um, I'm going to persevere with this Nimzovich defence a little bit, but uh, I don't think it's uh, something that I'm going to recommend to uh, beginning players, because it can just go so many different ways. Um, so the, the main idea, I think, is that you really want to tempt white into playing d4, and then, I think you play d5, and if takes, takes, and black has a nice lead in development at this point, right? So that's the uh, Scandinavian variation. But uh, yeah, I might do some videos on this at some point, but you know, because it can take so many different routes, and it can become a Karakhan, it can become a Philidor, it can become a Vienna, it can become all kinds of things, four knights and whatever. Um, so you, you really do know, have to know your way around an awful lot of different openings in order to play this, I think, with any kind of degree of success. So don't think it's one for, for beginners at all. Um, and unless there are some very interesting traps or uh, things that people can fall into easily, I might, I might try, keep trying it against some, some lower rated players just to see if there are any interesting uh, lines in there. But uh, yeah, my hunch is that, that this isn't going to be uh, what a good one for you guys really so so anyway interesting game thanks for watching appreciate your support and i'll see you soon